Get the popcorn, Frank. Coming, dear. Uh, hello. Uh, thank you all for coming. Uh, my name is Arthur Bergeron. Uh, I'm an elder law attorney. I work at Myrick O'Connell. Uh, Myrick O'Connell is a big firm. There are 52 of us. There are 72 of us right here, or excuse me, there are 17 of us right over here in Westboro. Uh, I like that because this is all I have to do. <laughs> Everybody else does something else that's kind of special. Uh, I have been practicing for a long time, as you can see from my advanced age. I started doing this in 1991 when my mother died in a nursing home. And I watched that play out, and it was not good. And I said to myself, there should be another better way, and that's why I got involved in all of this stuff. So um, that's what I do. Um, uh, I ha in the course of what I do, though, I've really come to appreciate that what I really do, people think when they're talking to an elder lawyer, they're talking about a whole variety of issues. But usually what they're talking about is Alzheimer's disease. They're talking about, and the reason why they're talking about it uh, is because, A, it lasts for a long time and is kind of unlike many of the other major diseases, <clears throat> and B, because you can go broke from it. Um, th th that fact results from a kind of peculiar historical fact, uh, which is that Medicare doesn't cover it. Um, Medicare was designed to keep old people from going broke. Uh, in 1960, before Medicaid was, was passed, Medicaid was passed, I think, 1965, before Medicare, Medicare was passed, 33% um, of all people in this country over age 60 were poor. That is an unbelievable number to think of right now, because that just seems so incredible. Right now, that number is between 6 and 7%. The major reason is Medicare. Uh, by that time Medicare passed, Social Security had already been around for over 30 years. But still, almost a third of Americans over 60 were poor. So Medicare really has kept a lot of people from being poor unless you have dementia, unless you have a disease that causes dementia. If you have cancer, Medicare will take care of it. They'll do, we'll do operations, we'll do biopsies, we'll do everything. Uh, if you have diabetes, same thing, we're gonna cover you in the hospital. If you have lung cancer, um, but if you have dementia and so you need help dressing or going to the bathroom, right? Those skills are not, the skills needed to help you are not skillful enough to cause Medicare to be willing to pay for them, which is why um, people who have dementia are so concerned about going broke, which is why they're concerned about mass health and other issues. So that's why I kind of do what I do. So in the course of this, I find myself dealing, though, with a whole bunch of players who are involved in this. And one of the primary players are the folks from the Alzheimer's Association. Because what I do is totally, from a broader perspective, stopgap. I'm trying to help people who are worried about Alzheimer's now or who have it uh, and are worried about how to deal with it because it's not going to get cured over the next couple of years. I cannot tell people, nobody can tell someone who has dementia where they already have Alzheimer's that in their remaining lifetime there is going to be some way to slow this down to the extent or certainly to reverse anything. In the longer run though, um, that's really kind of what the Alzheimer's Association is about. They're helping people with immediate kind of issues, but they're also helping people with trying to deal with trying to find cures. Um, so we're doing this set of presentations. I'm doing it with the Alzheimer's Association so you can meet them, and also with Bay Path Elder Services. How many people here have heard of Bay Path Elder Services? Raise your hand. Oh, not enough. So Bay Path, and, and by the way, that camera's there because this will be rebroadcast on cable because, of course, so many of the families that are dealing with Alzheimer's early stages are not here because they're at home, because you've got caregivers and people who are at home, many of them who don't want to leave their home anymore because they're nervous to because they have early stages of Alzheimer's. So Bay Path is, the, is a nonprofit um, ASAP, an Aging Services Access Point, or ASAP, um, whose purpose is to basically funnel 
federal and state dollars to you or to your uh, relatives who are elders and who need it. They are a nonprofit. They are your tax dollars at work. And so many of the programs to help families deal with Alzheimer's are administered by BayPath and they actually write the checks. So they are, you, you want to be their friend, right? Nancy Sherman is here from, like, excuse me, Nancy Stevens is here from BayPath to talk to you a little bit about that. Um, then, because the point of this presentation is to talk about, so if you've got some signs that you look like they may be, uh, you know, the, the, the Alzheimer's type signs or dementia signs, but you're not sure, kind of what do you do? Um, and I think the folks from the Alzheimer's Association can help you talk about that. BayPath can talk to you about programs that are available. And then I asked two other people to come. Tammy Pazaricki uh, from Pleasantries. Uh, Pleasantries is a so-called social day model. These are, these are places for folks to go who have, who have dementia in the early stages so that they can socialize be with other people who have dementia in early stages, be with caregivers, and hopefully as a result of all of that, um, slow down the progress of the disease and also just live happier lives at those times because it has been my experience that when people have got Alzheimer's what they tend to do or when they think they do they tend to first deny it and then secondly to hide and hide in their house I know husbands and wives all a lot oh we we don't the, we don't see the kids anymore they, you know we don't really need to see them you know and we don't see our friends anymore because we don't because we're kind of embarrassed because for many people Alzheimer's isn't a disease but an embarrassment so I want to have Tammy, talk to you about that program. There were a number of these throughout Massachusetts. This is just the closest one, but I wanted you to get a sense of that. Right? Um, um, then I also wanted to have Shelby Marshall talk to you because Shelby is, is involved in one of the many home care entities that provide home care uh, that are in this area. Um, there are a lot of them. And by the way, for those of you who are, who are interested in getting home care, the, one of the first people you want to talk to uh, is the folks over at BayPath because they are the single biggest vendor of home care services. They buy home care services for a whole bunch of people using state and federal dollars. So they know everybody, right? They've kind of vetted them so that if you've got home care, if you don't kind of know, know who to trust, right, that's a good way to be, to be talking about that. So um, the people that I talk about, my friends Frank and Mary. Frank and Mary uh, and their three children, Peter, Paul, and Mary Jr., um, have a home that is worth about $300,000. Its value is going up now because the economy is getting better. They have a, they, he has an IRA, 150. They have an annuity worth 100. They've got bank accounts worth about $75,000. They're not rich, but they're not poor. They don't have a mortgage. He's got a pension and social security and she's got social security. So they've got income of uh, almost, or a little over $3,000 a month. They're gonna be just fine for the rest of their lives, they'll be able to fulfill their dream of living in their house until they die and being buried in the backyard unless one of them gets Alzheimer's, in which case there may be some issues that we want to be talking about, and we'll talk about those a little bit later on. Because um, the issue is, so what if Mary is not feeling well? What if she is not feeling well? Once again, she doesn't have the serious, stage, serious stages of Alzheimer's. She would not be eligible for nursing home care, nor would anybody want to go, right? Um, but the question is, what can you do to help her? And, and how can you know if she is being forgetful, uh, whether she has Alzheimer's disease? Um, to talk to us about that, my friend Julie McMurray from the Alzheimer's Association. Julie? 